Good morning, children. Today we are going to study weather and climate. Chapter three. Now, what is the meaning of weather? Weather is the day-to-day or short-term state of the atmosphere of at any time. Like every day on daily basis, the changes in temperature and the moisture condition. is termed as weather now weather and climate weather is the day to day or short term state of the atmosphere at any time now weather may be hot cold wet or dry calm or stormy clear or cloudy almost all these weather phenomena occur in the lower part of the atmosphere lower part of the atmosphere means there are different layers of atmosphere troposphere is the lower part of atmosphere where all the weather phenomena such as um, rainfall storms cyclones etc are felt are experienced now climate is the average of the weather conditions for a particular region observed over a period of not less than 30 years the term climate includes the average of precipitation temperature humidity sunshine wind velocity fog frost hail storms and other phenomena of weather that occur over a long period in a particular place now the elements of weather and measuring instruments the elements of weather are temperature atmospheric pressure rainfall moisture wind speed wind direction clouds and sunshine let us study about the different instruments used for recording the various phenomena of weather temperature temperature is always measured in degree centigrade or celsius now the degree of hotness or coldness of air that surrounds us is known as temperature the temperature of the atmosphere varies between the day and night and from season to season how in the day time the temperature is maximum and at night it is minimum means the temperature lowers down in at night and same for season to season like in summer season the temperature is too high in winter season it is low so this is how the temperature keeps on varying now measuring temperature a thermometer is used for measuring temperature of free moving air temperature is measured in two scales celsius scale degree c and fahrenheit scale degree f on fahrenheit scale the freezing point of water is 32 degree f on celsius scale freezing point of water is 0 degree centigrade The boiling point on Fahrenheit scale is two hundred and twelve degree F. The boiling point on Celsius scale is hundred degree, say C or centigrade. In India, Celsius scale is used for measuring temperature. In a thermometer, mercury is used to measure the temperature. Mercury expands with rise in temperature and contracts. with the fall in temperature six is maximum and minimum temperature a thermometer was developed to record the maximum and minimum temperatures reached every year at the weather stations thermometers are kept in a white stevenson screen which allows air to circulate freely but shields the thermometer from direct sunlight and precipitation this ensures the measurements are not cor- are correct and accurate nowadays an 
automatic thermometer called thermograph is used for continuous recording of temperature. A calculation of temperature, mean daily temperature, how it is calculated in a day average maximum temperature is taken and maximum uh, minimum temperature is also taken average of minimum temperature every hour temperature is measured so we get 24 readings of maximum temperature and 24 readings of minimum temperature which is then divided by 24 to take out the mean mean means average daily temperature now for 24 hours 20, we get 24 average temperature readings then we add up and divide it by 2 means average of maximum temperature plus average of minimum temperature is added and it is divided by 2 this is how we get mean daily temperature now diurnal range of temperature daily or diurnal range of temperature range means we have to subtract minimum from maximum so for that suppose minimum temperature is 20 degree centigrade and maximum temperature is 35 degree centigrade in a day so what do we do we subtract 20 from 35 degree centigrade and that will be called the diurnal range of temperature. Next is mean monthly temperature, mean means average. So in a month how many days are there? 30 days. Now for 30 days the temperature is average mean daily temperature is added and then it is divided by 30 means uh, for 30 days the temperature is added and then it is divided by 30 so this is how we get mean monthly temperature now monthly range of temperature again range means maximum minus minimum so the difference between the maximum and minimum temperatures of a month is called mean monthly range of temperature. Sorry, not mean. It is called monthly range of temperature. Now, mean annual temperature. The average of the mean annual monthly temperatures for a year is the mean annual temperature. We calculate the mean annual temperature by adding the mean monthly temperatures of a year and then dividing by 12. Mean annual temperature is equal to sum of the mean monthly temperatures of a year by 12. Annual range of temperature again range means maximum minus minimum. So for annual range of temperature, annual means for 12 months, the mean monthly temperature of the hottest month and mean monthly temperature of the coldest month is taken out and then it is divided by 12. Mean uh, monthly temperature of the hottest month minus mean monthly temperature of the coldest month next is isotherm isotherm is the representation of the temperature on a map now isotherms are the imaginary lines which joins the places having same type of temperature at a particular time. Now these are the contoured lines you can see in the map. The black lines which are moving in a wavering form 
are the contoured lines and the temperature map is shown in different colors according to the intensity of heat the temp colors are depicted so the contoured lines uh, connect areas of equal temperature and color scale is used to differentiate between areas air pressure the air exerts pressure on all of us from all directions our body exerts a counter pressure how uh, the blood inside our body it also uh, exerts pressure and uh, this is how the pressure which is um, exerted by the column of air in the atmosphere is not felt by us because from inside our body also a counter pressure is exerted now we can define air pressure as the pressure exerted by weight of a column of air on 1 cm square area on the earth's surface the atmospheric pressure varies from place to place and time to time as we ascend up as we go higher in the atmosphere the pre air pressure decreases this is why uh if we climb a mountain or if we reach to a, a higher altitude the air pressure decreases whereas at the sea level the air pressure increases so air pressure is highest at the sea level and it is low as we climb high air pressure varies from place to place and time to time it is affected by temperature altitude and the earth's rotation now air pressure is affected by temperature how when the air is warm low pressure is created when the uh, uh, temperature is cold high pressure is created altitude at the low sea level the air pressure is high as we climb high on the mountain the air pressure decreases earth's rotation due to the rotation of the earth the winds they are deflected the warm air from the equator moves towards the poles which forms a low pressure at the equator and at the poles which is a high pressure zone because it is very cold uh, low a uh, high pressure is created at the poles and the winds they move around and they come towards the equator so this is how the circulation of air is uh, created on earth due to the earth's rotation now the movement of air is also affected by temperature and pressure difference that just now i have told you cold air is heavy and sinks down creating high pressure air always moves from high pressure areas to cold uh, low pressure areas just like from polar regions the which is a high pressure zone the winds they move towards the equator which is a low pressure zone now measuring high uh, air pressure a barometer is used for measuring air pressure now children it is very difficult for you to uh, understand its working without seeing a real instrument still as it is shown over here wet and dry bulb thermometer and mercury barometer you can you have to understand by looking at these pictures the aneroid barometer is mostly used nowadays to measure atmospheric pressure it does not contain mercury hence it is portable means it can be carried away at any place easily it consists of a metal box with a partial vacuum inside vacuum means um, nothing is placed inside that uh, metal box it is totally empty 
there is no air it is vacuum and a flexible wall which expands and contracts a pointer indicates the atmospheric pressure accordingly there is an automatic barometer called barograph which is used to record atmospheric pressure on a graph paper so you can understand its working only by seeing a real barometer which is not available here now humidity humidity means the amount of moisture present in the air now humidity means air which is full of water vapor and when the air is 100% full of water vapor and it starts pouring it starts raining then only it is called to be saturated now humidity also varies greatly from place to place and from time to time the actual amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere is called absolute humidity it is closely related to the air temperature in weather recordings relative humidity is recorded it is the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor present in the air and the total amount of water vapor that the air can hold at a given temperature relative humidity is always expressed in percentage now absolute humidity is expressed in grams of moisture present in per cubic meter of air measuring humidity there are two instruments to record humidity wet and dry bulb thermometer and hygrometer in a wet and dry bulb thermometer a large difference between two thermometers means low relative humidity and a small difference means high relative humidity hygrometer is an automatic instrument which is used nowadays there are various types of hygrometers to measure humidity precipitation precipitation means rain anything any moisture any sort of moisture that comes down to the earth surface is called precipitation so rain hail sleet snow are the forms of precipitation now measuring rainfall rainfall is measured by an instrument called rain gauge now a rain gauge is always installed in an open place in a ground away from the sea trees buildings or any other objects which can obstruct the rainfall to avoid splash means a bucket is kept with a wide open mouth in which the rain water which falls from the sky is collected and it is made sure that it does not splash out so once it is collected it is measured with a measuring jar the readings are generally taken once in every 3 hours at a fixed time a calculation of rainfall the total daily rainfall for every 3 hours during a day the rainfall is recorded so we get eight readings and the total of it the sum of the eight readings gives total daily rainfall total monthly rainfall we add the total daily rainfall of that month for 30 days or 31 days that is called total monthly rainfall mean monthly rainfall mean monthly rainfall mean means average so we add up for 30 days and then we divide it by the number of days in that month a total annual rainfall total monthly rainfall for 12 months are added together and then the sum of the monthly totals of the rainfall for 12 months is the total annual rainfall mean annual rainfall once uh, total annual rainfall is taken out 
it is divided by the number of months in that year so there are 12 months in a year and this is how mean annual rainfall is calculated now coming to iso heights iso heights are the representation of rainfall on a map we have learnt about isotherms now these are the iso heights isotherms are for calculating or seeing the temperature graph iso heights are for rainfall now the distribution of rainfall on a map is shown with lines that join places having the same rainfall these lines are called iso heights there are very they are very useful in preparing weather maps and iso height maps displays the rainfall for a particular area over a specified period of time the contoured lines connect areas of same rainfall and many times a color scale is used to differentiate between areas so children we have these are the elements of weather which we are discussing we have already discussed temperature atmospheric pressure rainfall moisture now wind speed then we will be studying about wind direction then clouds and sunshine so wind what is the meaning of wind the moving air is called wind the sun does not heat up the surface of the earth evenly because earth is spherical in shape it is round in shape so at some places the direct rays of the sun falls and at some places the slanting rays of the sun fall for example the sun rays fall directly over the equator so it heats up equator and the nearby areas intensely whereas the slanting rays of the sun fall over the poles thus the heating is less so there are differences in air pressure in different areas wherever the difference occurs air rushes from high to low pressure area resulting into in the definite horizontal moving of air now finding direction and measuring speed now wind vane is used to find direction of a wind of wind it consists of rotating arrow pivoted on a vertical rod pivoted means an arrow is placed on a rod now a vertical a wind vane has pointed end called the arrow and a broad end called the tail the arrow always points in the direction in which the wind is blowing wind is always named after the direction from which it blows for example wind that blows from west to east is called westerly wind wind vanes are always placed in the open away from obstacle like buildings and trees so next is anemometer an anemometer is used for measuring the speed or force of wind you can see in this diagram it is given so this instrument has three or four horizontal arms fixed on a vertical spindle vertical means straight which points towards the sky the ends of the arms are fixed with metal cups the cups rotate with the force of the wind there is wind speed indicator fixed in the anemometer which records the speed of the wind in kilometers or knots per hour nowadays an anemograph is used to measure and record wind speed on graph paper this recording is done continuously now the speed of wind is measured on the beaufort scale the scale was developed in 1805 by sir francis beaufort a british admiral he introduced a set of description 
for winds based on observations of the effect of wind on the type of things that the wind could move. Next comes cloud. What are clouds? Condensation in the atmosphere helps in the formation of water droplets. Water particles take the support of dust particles to float in the atmosphere. Such water droplets together form clouds. Now children, you have heard of evaporation. When, the, uh, when sun shines brightly, the water bodies, they get heated up. Then they turn water into vapor. Then water vapor, as it rises up, it becomes very light when it gets heated up. So, as it rises, it starts cooling down. So, when this air starts cooling down, the pollution, the water, uh, the dust particles, pollution is also very important to us. Don't have, ever think that it only creates nuisance. It is very helpful also in other ways. How? The dust particles in the air, which is caused due to pollution, they absorb the moisture of the atmosphere and tiny droplets, they cling to the dust particles. Now, all the tiny particles, then when they come closer to each other, they form huge clouds. And when the clouds are filled with water droplets, it gets saturated and rainfall occurs. So, clouds are very important to us. Now, clouds, they also have different names according to their heights. Now, coming to cirrus clouds, you can see over here in the diagram, it is a feathery, silky strand of cloud. So, it is formed at the highest altitude, 5000 to 10,000 meters from the earth. So, it is composed of tiny ice crystals and they are rainless clouds. They don't um, cause rain, but they bring fair weather, nice pleasant weather. Next comes cumulus cloud. Cumulus clouds are formed at a height of 2000 to 6000 meters above the earth. Now, they are in a shape of cauliflower, dome shape. They are grey in colour and they cause thunder and lightning. Next comes stratus cloud. Stratus clouds are formed at a height of 2000 meters. They are flat sheet like clouds. They cause drizzles and they are grey and dull in colour. Nimbus clouds, they are thick, dark clouds which spread out in layers. They bring storm, rain, etc. and they bring rain for continuous days. They are formed at a lower elevation near about 2000 meters from the earth. Now, weather can be easily predicted with the help of studying cloud type. For meteorological purpose, the amount of cloud cover in the sky is expressed in octas. Now, sunshine is determined by three factors, season, latitude of a place and the amount of cloud cover in the sky. Sunshine recorder is used to measure sunshine. Weather maps, these are very important. We all are dependent on weather maps. So, in newspapers also, a, a column of weather maps is shown. On television also, in news, we come to know about the weather nowadays. In Android, in uh, mobile phones also, weather forecasts are depicted, are shown. So, every day the weather conditions are continuously recorded at weather stations across the country with the help of different weather instruments. Careful observations and calculations are made with the help of electronic devices to make predictions related to weather. The predictions about different 
elements of weather are collectively called weather forecast. People are informed about weather forecast through newspapers, radio and television. The scientific study of the elements of weather is called meteorology and the people who conduct these scientific studies are called meteorologists. They collect data on the maps which are called weather maps. Weather effects are environment, lifestyle and economic activities. Therefore, man has observed weather and made predictions about it since time immemorial. The prediction of climate started way back in the late 1700 by climatologists. Modern day scientists can predict weather with great accuracy with the help of satellites. Weather related data is also collected by weather ships, balloons and satellites. Weather forecasts are very useful for farmers, fishermen, aviators, navigators and even general public. Children, uh, I will be shortly discussing the question and answers with the blanks etc. So first you all read the chapter go through it and if you have any doubts ping me on my whatsapp personal whatsapp number and the rest i will be discussing shortly thank you